Hello geeks and welcome back to Ark Building Ascended with me, Unite the Clans. We're doing something a little different today as I'm standing next to a big red mailbox. I turned on my HUD and had a look and I noticed it said fan mail on it. I looked inside and I found this note. Help me UTC, I've been trying to build your snowy river cabin and it just doesn't look right in Ascended. What am I doing wrong? I'm at 2137 on your map. Well that's not too bad because look where we are guys. The snowy river cabin just in the background there. This is a blast from the past, an ancient memory of one of my earliest arc building videos. And today we're going to go take a look at how it looks in Ascended. And then from there we'll get creative and see what we can do with that design. I see what you mean, Huntsman. It doesn't look quite right. A lot of things have changed between arc and arc Ascended. Building, for one, is way easier. You guys used to need me to teach you how to make something like this because it required placing a fence foundation here to get the pillar in place and it required thatch roofs replaced with stone in order to get overlapping hipped roofs like we have up here. But another one of the changes is walls are actually square. They used to be uh, wider than they are tall and roofs used to overhang a little bit uh, in all directions. When you had a stone roof on a wooden wall, there was a lip on every side, and that, in part, is why this just doesn't look right to you, Huntsman. I think the problem is, in Ark, you guys needed my help to build small things like this. This is too small now. Anybody can build this. I mean, you did it. No problem, right, Huntsman? You don't need me. You watched an Ark Survival Evolved video, and you managed to build it and ascend it. That's pretty good. But I think we just doubled the size. I think we just start over and we just double this thing up. Complete transformation. Twice as tall, twice as wide, twice as deep. And we'll make a big, beautiful, snowy river cabin. 2.0. What do you guys say? Does that sound like fun? Join me. You know, I built the original in survival on my very first multiplayer server with other ARC content creators, Iron Mine, where I met a Rally the Geek and Monkey Puzzle. And one day, after 27 episodes of taming and exploring, I wandered into the woods just to do a build just for fun. And I built this snowy river cabin. And after a while, I looked back and realized no one had watched anything but that. I had maybe seven or 800 views on the next best video, and this one had 20,000. And I saw there was a niche. There's a niche for a build. Older. And my favorite channels, uh, when I had been watching Minecraft and getting inspired to become a content creator myself, had been the builders. I love uh, Corrales and B00. I love watching people build and tap into their creative side. And for a while, I got to make that my jam. I took the Snowy River Cabin and I made it my blueprint. And we put together a ton of great tutorials that a lot of you still remember fondly, as I know from the comments. And the mail in my big red mailbox. So the original was quite a small design, guys. If we want to double it, we'll need to be, I think, eight foundations across and at least four deep, although we'll play with it. You see we have some really uneven terrain here. I think I might remove this entire row and we'll just shift everything back. One of my credos is to embody the spirit of Bob Ross because people used to make that comparison back in the day when I was doing my tutorials and his motto was no mistakes just happy accidents so this terrain's a bit uneven but we're going to make it work our back row is going to sit a little higher than our front but we're not going to ignore it we're not just going to level it out we're going to incorporate it into our design so I am deep enough but now we need to add one row on each side and we'll be it four by eight and then we can get going I'll add in a couple more pieces here and we'll take a look at the next step all right, we have our 4x8 shape, and now we add the deck. The original deck was just a few blocks, so we're going to come out twice as far. We'll do a 2x3 on each side here, and then I think what we'll do is steps in the middle and use some quarter ceilings. Uh, we have door frames, but it's hard to center them in a build like this um, with the default foundations. So what we're going to do is take these quarter walls. We'll add a row on each side, and then we will have one ceiling directly in the center of our build lined up between these two stone foundations and it's on this that we will snap our door and center our design so hopefully that works for us now we can still build the same shape up top uh, because of the way we've built this but let's go ahead and add a staircase here on the front just to remind us exactly where the center is that looks good We add in a couple of railings here, and now we have to get, um, we might have to get creative, guys, because one of the things that made this original design so appealing, it was it had two really big chunky pillars out front holding up the overhang, and pillars in Arc Ascended are actually a little sleeker 
they're smaller and narrower. So if our build is doubling in size from the original, I'm not sure we can get away with a pillar that's actually skinnier than the original, but we're gonna work with it for now and get started on our second floor overhang. This was one of the features I always liked about this build. It had crisscrossing or valleyed roofs uh, on it. I think I said hipped, hip is the other way around, but uh, what we're trying to create is a valley roof so that in that back corner, the two roofs merge together. That used to be hard in Ark Survival Evolved and now it's really easy. So that doubles our original instead of two by one, uh, we have a four by two. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we come in with some walls and um, you may have to remove some of these things as you go, but that's one of the beautiful things about Arc Ascended, guys. It really embodies that no mistakes, happy accidents. You don't get punished for putting a, a, a wall in the wrong place. Uh, you can just pick it up and try again. And we may have to do that as we build. I think that's a good way to play. Don't get too committed and be willing to change things as you go. We'll put a couple of door frames on top, guys, and then we'll add in these sloped walls. Now we have a shape reminiscent of the front of the original Snowy River cabin, but a lot bigger, and it should let in lots of natural light. I mentioned that pieces used to overhang, and here in uh, Arc Ascended, everything is flush. It's not bad, but it removes a little bit of the character. What we're going to try and do now is offset our stone roofs. If I'm able to snap here, then this next piece should overhang the front. But it seems we have to build in a very particular order. So go ahead and pop these pieces out. I warned you that might happen. And now we'll try again with our slope roof over top, just like so. We'll do it on both sides. It's lovely that you can build down from the top. You can attach a sloped roof to another sloped roof. Excellent. So now we have an overhang. Let's go ahead and grab our sloped walls and make sure they fit back in these holes. Very nice. Uh, there is a setting you can do to turn some of this stuff off, and it seems a lot of tutorial builders out there now build primarily in that disable collision mode, but I want to give you guys builds that work in any scenario. We're going to go ahead and add some greenhouse glass doors and windows. Luckily, they're the same piece now, so they don't take up two spots on your hotbar. It makes building a lot easier, and we're just going to make sure it's symmetrical. We'll put the hinges to the inside here and to the outside here, and now we can step back and assess whether these pillars are going to cut it. They look pretty wimpy to me, guys. I think we need to reinvent the pillar. This is functional, but I don't think it's going to do the job. Luckily for us, Ascended has given us a lot of cool new building pieces, and we have these quarter walls. I think we're going to use them to just build a big old square pillar, and we're going to put it right on the corner, and it's going to basically look as though it actually supports this overhead, and if this looks good, we'll take a step back. Of course, build them all the way to the ground. These are going to be pillars, so use your imagination. It looks like it should go all the way through because it's holding that up. Build it all the way to the ground, and... We can. Excellent. I'm going to put one of these on. I'll put one on the other side as well. Oh, actually, I must show you. If you're going to do this, you need to place a quarter ceiling. So we could have built our deck a little differently and made this work so smoothly. I apologize. Um, but we'll go ahead and add these here. And now we have a three-dimensional square pillar. It is the one quarter of a foundation in size. And that is really neat. Let's try this on the other side. And then we'll see how our build looks and if we can get rid of these wimpy thin pillars. Speaking of wimpy guys, I uh, always forget to ask you to click the like button. I've been away for a while, so it will make a big difference if you guys smashed those thumbs up for this video. That would be great, and I'll keep doing more of these 2.0 builds. Yeah, I like it, guys. We are locking it in. Let's go ahead and get rid of these wimpy little guys, and we'll actually go ahead and ditch the staircase too. Now that we've redone this, I think we can comfortably put in two or three staircases across the front of this. That's easy for me to say. Let's go ahead and pop them in now. All right, guys, the wimpy pillars are out. The new square pillars are in. The old staircase centered is out, and we're going to do a triple staircase across the front. Oh my god, easy for me to say. That perfectly fits in here. Now we'll add some railings, and after we come around the corner here, we're going to have to get into the actual design of this building. And because of the way we've put together the stone roofs, we're going to have to be pretty careful with how we do it, because we're building one half a foundation off the alignment. You see how it overhangs here, and now we have this chunk here. There are no quarter sloped roofs, so we're going to have to figure out if we can transition from one part of the build to the next right here. The simplest way to do it would probably be to do this, but I think that might put us too deep into the build before we make our transition. Let's head to the other side and try a different version. 
Here we are on the other side, guys. I think if we build like this, we get a beautiful natural valley. What a long way Ark has come. You used to have to jump through hoops to make a corner that looked like this, and it's a lot of the reason I got clicks on my channel in the old days. People went, how do you make it look like that? I mean, now you guys know, look how simple this comes together. You could just look at my thumbnail and know how to build this thing. You don't even need me, do you? Um, but I've, I think if we make this transition, it's going to be good. We're going to go ahead and take this pattern and put it in on the other side because it definitely works. Ooh, yes. Yeah, that captures the essence of the original Snowy River cabin. Now we have some work to do, guys. It's come together, pillars, railings, the sloped roof, but now we need to get to work on the main body of this thing. Foundations are typically considered the pieces you put at the bottom, but a lot of buildings uh, that you look at have stone, if their foundation is stone, that comes up above the level of the ground. And when I designed the original Snowy River Cabin, I built the first floor out of stone and everything above that out of wood. And I think that also gave it some appeal in terms of thumbnail. Uh, and I think it's true to life. I think if you look around at the buildings in your world, the older they are and the simpler they are uh, in terms of materials, the more likely you are to see something like this. Stone rising up to a certain height and wood above that. And I think it works great with the pillars we have in place. We now have stone on our lower floors and wood up top, capped off by beautiful snow-covered stone. Another beautiful addition in Ark Ascended is building here and watching your materials change as you go. So it's time for us to figure out exactly what to do with our unusually shaped uh, foundations. And I think we have to decide to add a quarter wall either at the front or the back in order to bring everything up to height. I think the best place to do it is at the back, which is already offset. So we're going to go ahead and build off the lower part of our foundation with simple stone walls. We're not going to add much detail here on the sides and we'll build all the way to the back. That should be four walls deep. Now underneath, we are going to have a gap uh, and we'll have that at the back with nothing to snap to either. So let's start off with the quarter walls and we'll build off like this going all the way across. Uh, you can choose to add in a little bit of flare. I don't know why I put a window there. There's just a big rock on the other side, but nothing's finalized, guys. We may work out the final shape of this as we go. I'm going to try and build a sort of unusual roof on this section, so don't build this back wall until you're ready. We might go ahead and jump to the roof before you want to finalize this part. But now we have a gap to fill, and I think this is actually going to be nice. This is us uh, working with the happy accident of this terrain, and we're actually differentiating the two parts of our cabin where the elevation changes and this part will have a sort of border a little outline around the outside of it it won't be obvious from the outside but from the inside you will see this beautiful repeating x pattern and it will make this look like a different space and i think that's good i'd actually now that i look at it like to do more of this um i have them sort of randomized on the front of the build but i think we could use these quarter wall pieces perhaps here and here uh, to create even more differentiation between the two halves of our cabin. It's a nice big space now, so we can play with this. I think what I'll do using this quarter ceiling is try it both ways. First, I'll place this outer texture right here to build a, I don't know what you call it. It would be a continuation of the type of pillar we designed for the front. And then on the other side, what I'd like to do is the inside out. And this will be a continuation of the border that we have at the bottom. And we'll look and decide which of these two works best. I think I like the inside out texture. So let's pop in and get rid of this one. And now we will do the inside out version on both sides. So if we look, we have this sort of unusual space and we've now kind of delineated it. We've made it make sense. So we just need to keep working and build this up and see where the design goes. We discover it as we build. That's how I like to play. Now we return to our wooden building pieces. We've got to work out some of our snap points. If we build off the bottom, we'd have to actually use a quarter wall here, I think, to get the alignment we need for a sloped wall. Now these quarter wooden walls, there's actually two versions of them. You see, I should have picked the other one to close those little gaps. It's nice attention to detail, and maybe we'll be able to work with that later, but let's get rid of this just for the moment, and instead we'll build off here. I snapped a quarter wall below here, guys, and now we're going to try and put a sloped wall. That is excellent. We can remove this piece and that is the alignment we need. I think we can build up from below now, um, but we've created an eave. We have the overhang on the front. We now have an eave, which I think is quite a cool shape. We, you'll see it in a second when we get to the end. Um, but for this first layer of wood, you can build in line with what's below and then we're going to come up and find the alignment for the next row. 
Now we have our corner in place. We're going to come in and first place this one, and then we're going to build an overhang. This can go upside down. Put the top texture on the bottom, and now, now we have accounted for our eaves, the part of the roof that's going to overhang wider than the wall. When we come to this point, we can go ahead and place another sloped wall here to cap it off, and you'll see that it sits in between the other two. So uh, we will build this lower row, and then we can come up and, with a different set of snap points, build the upper row. Now we're going to have to build up to the top and create a point in our roof using more sloped walls. Like I said, add in windows where you see fit, and I've just realized a problem. We actually have to change the dimensions if we're going to build like this and either make it one smaller or one larger. I say one larger. So let's extend our build, as I'm assuming you don't mind, Huntsman, a little further to the right. I hadn't planned for that, but if we're going to turn and if we're going to expand by a half foundation, that means instead of being four wide, this roof section would be five wide. So if we have a five wide, five by eight, <clears throat> our lower section is now five by eight. Thank you for hanging with me as I figure it out. That means that our eaved roof is six across, and we can make a perfect point at the top. Had I not made it wider, we would have to get very creative. Ark hasn't yet added the little triangle topper piece that used to come, I think, with Structures Plus. And it's very interesting to see what's happening in Ark these days, guys. For a long time in Survival Evolved, Structures Plus was the only thing that most content creators were playing with because it just worked, and it was created by Orion Sun, and when Ascended came along, they got Orion Sun, and I believe GG Fizz, and took input from folks like Aaron Longstaff, and they came out with a building system that is just excellent now. By hiring the people who figured out how to make the broken one better, They've given us a building system that just works, and you can build horizontally off your slope. You don't need to get a wall up here in order to get this piece in place. It's just smoother. It's friendly to folks like us who want to use this game creatively. It used to be a little hostile, but now, now look at this space we've created, and you have to take advantage of your opportunities, guys, if something jumps at you. I see the sun coming down on this roof right here, and I realize this spot is going to get sunlight that could light up at the inside of the build, so why don't we go into our crafting. We'll put together a few of these glass sloped roofs, the greenhouse pieces, and we'll add a skylight. There's room for that now that this build is expanded, and if you see the light cast down on the inside, that's going to be great. So, we have expanded the top of our build, but I haven't done anything quite yet to expand the bottom. We need to fill in this top section with stone roofs, I notice when I watch other tutorials, I'm trying to figure out who's doing what out there, and uh, people really, they get it figured out <laughs> a lot of the time before they go, and they build one whole section and move on to another. I have a habit of building part of something and then moving on to the next part, but that's how I figure it out. I hope you don't mind following along like this, guys. I am having a blast rediscovering this one, and that means... Um, we're going to get to dive potentially maybe into more of the back catalog. I'm like an old washed up rock star offering you the box set. The first disc includes this, the Snowy River Cabin. So we're working on 2.0 right now. We've expanded the foundation out from 4x8 to 5x8. And that means we can remove this back section of walls. What I don't want to do, however, is get rid of that raised detail that we have there. We now have another level change inside our build, and I think it's going to be kind of cool to have this much uh, variation in the design, and each level change goes across. Luckily, I can build just about into the edge of this. And for the person Huntsman who asked me to figure out this redesign, hopefully you don't mind having a big old rock in your place. You know what I'm going to call it? An architectural feature. And we'll figure out how to incorporate it into the build. Uh, I think that looks great, but you did need a bit more room than I thought. Otherwise, you could change the shape of the roof. But just build along, guys. Play along. You don't have to build it exactly like this. Now we'll do what we did on the other side. Upside down quarter ceilings to give that log cabin texture. And I realized I built this whole second level at the back in stone. I think that's fine for the very back, especially because we're up against the mountain. But uh, as we come around the corner, the second level should probably be wood in order to match up with what we built at the front of the design. So we'll figure that out from here. Uh, I will continue placing in these quarter ceilings upside down where we can to account for our eaves. And I think that is that very good guys so we don't have much more to do to close in this build let's repeat what we did on the other side and finish up this end of the build
again, building from above, or below, you're snapping to something above you and, oh, it's just so smooth, you really couldn't make this piece attach to that piece like that. I'm pretty sure you needed walls or ceilings. So the game just works better, guys. You can express yourself creatively. And I didn't finish my thought. What I wanted to point out is that when I look at channels now, playing in survival and still building like Syntac, he's building in the vanilla game and he's building really, really cool stuff. And that's a guy who only ever used S Plus for the last years of Ark, the many years from the first time I ever shared a server with him. And I think this personally, uh, uh, this new building system, it just works. It lets people do what they want to do. The old game used to frustrate you so much. So I just remembered we can't do stone here. We actually need wood. I think we'll just do walls all the way across. We can add in windows for lighting up higher. But with these final two pieces, I think we've closed in our design. Is that right? So, an eaved roof going this way, an overhanging roof going this way, and we have doubled the size of the Snowy River Cabin in just about 20 minutes. I think that is pretty, pretty good. What do you guys think? Have I captured its essence? And what else can we do with this thing? I feel good about this, but I also feel like we're just getting started. Let's go ahead and take the foot tour. We'll check out this space from inside. And my lord, it is an entirely different interior to the original Snowy River Cabin. We have a lot of space to work with, and we have a lot of work to do, including an architectural feature. Wow. All right, this is where the bed was in the original. It had a great view of a burning fireplace. It made the entire build feel a little more impenetrable to the cold and cozier. I'd like, from this location, to see the fireplace again. It's now cast in natural light, so we're going to build up with a stone wall here, and we'll add fireplace. Now, I think this is a multi-fireplace build, and you'll see why in a second. If we simply place this one, our chimney vents into the room, and that doesn't work. It's obviously going to do that anyway, but using our imagination, we're going to tap into an architectural feature. In a big house with multiple fireplaces, these chimneys often line up, and a first floor fireplace and a second floor fireplace will share a chimney in terms of where the smoke exits on the roof. The bottom of a fireplace will not clip, but the top will. This is the same as the original arc, so if we put one here in the center at the top, I'm quite confident when we go to the bottom to place one, yes, it will simply pop in. And now the smoke from our first chimney, in-game, will vent into the first, and we have a chimney that continues through. I like that. But we are not done. Like I said, a multi-fireplace build, I think that means more than this one central double fireplace. We're going to come up to each of our dormers, uh, the gables. I can't remember what the right word is. Gables. And we will build a fireplace here on a couple of quarter ceilings and we'll go do the same on the other side and then we'll take a look at how this thing looks from the outside with chimneys extending above the roof. Up to you whether you add windows in these spots guys. I've actually left them as is. They're so high up. Um, let's head down. Yes, excellent. And now the fireplaces are burning. We have four of them and this is going to be the way we design our interior. We'll start with these four fireplaces and we'll go from there. So we're already built out a quarter ceiling. I come out two here, but I bet that's gonna be too far. Let's try here one. And I think if we build out a quarter from this for a total of two out, that'll make it line up more or less neatly in the middle. So let's come back with quarter ceilings here and we'll do that on the other side and then we'll build down in both locations with stairs and hopefully meet another sort of catwalk design that will line up with our first fireplace. So staircase goes here. It's gonna be perfect. There's one and there's another. Now let's go double check the heights of this. That's awesome. That's exactly what we needed. So let's come from our first fireplace on the upper floor. We now have a main floor. This fireplace we're building at is our second, and the upper fireplaces are on our third floor. It's a three-story build. Our second story starts about three walls high, and our third story starts on the fourth wall up from our lowest point. Now we need another staircase to come down to this <laughs> sort of in-between. One and a half stories up, I guess, in this build. All right, and that lined up very, very neatly, guys, so that should be easy for you. I think I'm going to have to spam in railings, but the next thing I want to do is actually continue this, our pillar design. Uh, we've done these inside-out pillars, and they are an architectural feature. Not, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking about the rock, but since we've added these, we need to figure out what they do and what their purpose is, and I think we could build horizontally 
or vertically or both. If we build vertically, we come up right to the bottom of our fireplaces, and I like that. A big stone fireplace is going to be heavy, and it is probably going to need some support. And then we'll go do the same on the other side, but first, let's see what happens if we take it across, creating sort of a cross member, a stone beam that would support the superstructure of our second story, and I really like the look of this. These crisscross, this pattern on the back of this quarter wall stone piece, it's awesome. I like it. We're going to have to play more, guys, but little details like this, and a, a pardon, I hit the ground yawning every day, <laughs> not running, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, we have to play with these things and figure out what works. We've got our quarter stone ceilings here, not the wall, and they have a T pattern on them, which works. I think, now that I think about it, we might actually flip uh, at least one set of these snowy quarter ceilings I just placed, maybe the bottom ones, but we'll come back to that, and now... Stepping up here, we see we have a functional staircase. It comes from this one and a half floor to the second, where our big fireplace is. And then we'll have a small third floor up near the top. What a cool space we have made, friends, and greenhouse light. Now, another unfinished thing, I often do this, is this space here. We built this stone wall to uh, backstop our chimneys, and we need to figure out what's happening here. I think, in all my builds... Uh, these days, I like to add a generator for you guys, and that means we're going to need a ceiling because we are in between the foundation's snap points. So let's put in a stone ceiling up here. This will at least help make this look like a massive stone chimney, uh, and or at least the hearth that goes behind it, and we'll add in walls on either side. With that wall in place, it should be very easy to snap in a power supply. And we didn't do this in the original build. It was very small. I rarely went to the trouble of adding power and lighting and things like that. But now I want to do it every time, assuming we have space in just about every build that I do. Seems to end up with a secret nook that's perfect for a generator. So let's go ahead and expand this secret nook idea. We'll add in one more ceiling here. And I'm thinking about these secret doors, the ones that look like a wall, but will open. And then maybe we turn this upper space here into some storage I like it. These boxes have snap points. One goes right next to the other. And I think they go right on top as well. And they do. Very easy. Okay, so we can fit nine right here. That is a good start. I think, actually, I would switch this. Why not put your generator on the second floor and your storage on the first? That might be smarter. But too late. Too little and too late, my friends. Let's pop these out. And I think if... I understand this game, we're going to have room for it. The same thing on this side. So you'll have 18 small storage boxes hidden away in this little nook. That's real nice. So we'll add another one of the doors on this side. You'll need one in order to access your stuff. We're going to flip it inside out. And then down here, we'll just do a regular wall. Your generator doesn't need more than one door. <sighs> another big yawn. And I think we have the beginnings of our space. Now it really looks like that chimney is part of something. And this is what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and see which of these we prefer. I'm going to try inside outing this. So instead of the wood texture, we actually just get stone here on the bottom. We have a lot of wood uh, in terms of texture that shows this beam is built and supported by a combination of stone and wood. I think I really prefer that. So I'm going to replace all of these with the uh, regular version here that shows the top texture on the bottom. And that is an improvement, if you ask me. I quite like that. Um, since we are here, one of the things you guys are going to want to do in a build like this is add torches. I think you we have the power to add electrical lighting now, but I really think in a design like this, the torches are going to give us more of the feel we want. So I'll get some spark powder, and I'll light up both of these for us. We're probably going to do this at a few spots throughout the build. Having looked at it, yeah, I really like. I think we're going to want to do that uh, where we can. And now we have some real open spaces. We have some railings that need to go in place. And we have to figure out, essentially, how to connect all our spaces and not just have them, but make them useful. It's one thing for me to create a space for you guys that has rooms in it, but I didn't used to do anything with the rooms. I'd just go, here's your box. It's better than the box you're building. Are you happy? Uh, now I'd like to figure out what to do with it. We have this strange little space, and the last time I just used a ladder. We have room for a stair 
staircase, so let's build one. I think we'll do it in a way that is sort of minimal. What I, what, rather than build straight down from here and have a full ceiling at the bottom, we're going to put a set of quarter ceilings. And then down here, one wall lower, we can do quarter ceilings right in line with this window. We'll build all the way across and then a staircase down. We'll go a uh, two-directional staircase, whatever you call this. We'll have two flights in this staircase. So that will go like that. We'll come and swap this piece out just so it all lines up, and then we'll build a staircase down from this point to the main floor. All right, excellent. And this brings us right down. There is space under here that you guys could use as you set it up. I'm not sure what you would do with that. For now, I think we just leave it. I don't have a good idea quite yet. We have lots of space we need to account for yet, and I haven't figured it all out. Uh, looking at our entrance, I think the next thing we need is a way to transition between these levels because I'm jumping and it's sort of an awkward height. We have ramps and stairs, and I'm pretty sure the stairs are going to be the solution that works for us. Let's pop in another set right here. And and now the thought has occurred to me to continue playing with the pillars because there's not going to be a very neat way to end this. And we have this awesome, cool stone uh, uh, bar that we've built. It extends up on either side and over our heads, and I think we could bring it down on either side of this staircase. I actually removed the foundations. I don't think that I had to, but I wanted to see what my options were in terms of texture. So let's do this. We now have an extra set of these pillars. Oh, yeah. And that feels better. It feels different, and uh, I'm quite content with this. Uh, you've got this big open space, but we've delineated it. We've made it feel less... Uh, look, a big void... It's, it's good now. I don't like whoever built this ceiling. You could have done a neater job, sir, but that was me, and I'll have to live with the consequences of it, guys. Um, I think that's pretty good work on the inside, and we need to know more about the person we're building for before we can continue this project. So I return today to our mailbox. I'm going to leave a note for the Huntsman. Dear Huntsman, I'd like to know more about you, so I can design the interior. We'll leave it and we'll come back. All right, the flap is up. It says, hello, UTC. I'm a veteran survivor. I've f fought wars, gone on grand adventures, beat all the bosses, and I'm ready to retire somewhere quiet somewhere quiet. That makes me think about a study. We have this grand landing area here that was originally a small bedroom with a cot and a ladder. I think this is a good spot for bookshelves. Let's just figure it out as we go. One, two, three, and then maybe we'll go storage container right here. Turn the corner. Oh yeah, very easy. We'll do a table in between, maybe another bookshelf right here in betwixt our two windows. And sometimes they just, these designs just come together, guys. That's another element of these beautiful building pieces and the fact that they snap together. It looks like you can almost perfectly get three and then a half or three and a turned one. It's almost perfect precision. A couple of tables between these will help this make feel more like a study. You'll have somewhere to sit, read your maps, write your journals, and um, enjoy your books. So that is simple. We'll add in two, maybe three chairs, even though we know only one person lives here. You never know. may want to have friends over, do a little reading in the study. But for someone who's looking for a quiet life after having fought many battles, I think this is a good fit. I think we're creating a nice, chill space. All right, so three chairs in, but what really stumps me now, friends, and let's put away my torch, is that the black void at the back of the hall. What to do, what to do? Oh, I got it. <laughs> Huntsman, you will be so pleased. Guys, I have this figured out. Let's get some wooden double door frames. We have such an unusual shape here, and I need to make this big stone in the middle of our house look like it's not there by accident. After the double door frames, we're going to come in with custom lighting, maybe two on each side. My intention is going to be to set these to one. That is, they're very close to what they're going to be lighting up. We'll put in a couple of staircases. And now, the pièce de résistance. You've beat every boss, and you're looking for a quiet place to retire. Well, you better have somewhere to display those boss trophies, huntsmen. And uh, I don't think you want just a simple plaque on your chimney. I think you want a trophy room. Yeah. 
That's right, glass doors. We will make a giant display case. Custom lighting trophy mounts. Oh yeah. Guys, we did it. We figured out how to turn a weird space into something useful and intentional. We have to wait for the Huntsman to come back and install his many boss trophies. But we have more work to do on the interior of this place. Let's get it finished up. We have one nice little study and a lot more space to fill. My next thought is sleeping. We put in a few extra chairs in the study, and if the Huntsman ever has his friends over, they're going to need a place to crash and possibly respawn. So let's go ahead and give them a couple of these beautiful looking hide sleeping bags just for feel and ambiance. And now a place for the Huntsman himself to sleep. We didn't build a custom bedroom space, but I think you'd want to be by a fire, and perhaps you'd want to have breakfast in bed. You ever think about that? This is not your breakfast. This is still a useful crafting station, but maybe the mortar and pestle will look a little bit like the huntsman's breakfast. I think that works for me. And now we have the other side up here on this top floor. My thought is primitive crafting. We'll start with the smithy. And now that I think about it, maybe smithy under the window would have been better with the forge on the wall and venting its smoke out the top. But I'm not sure it would fit over in that space, would it? Not really. So let's just do it the way it came naturally. We'll put the forge right here. And if I have time, maybe I'll pop back in here and show you guys Santa's version of the forge and smithy. And now we have more spaces to account for. We need crafting. We need cooking. There is room in this new version of the Snowy River Cabin for everything, including your fabricator, including, next, your chemistry bench. So let's find a nice spot to fit that in. And if you guys figure out better ways to rearrange this space, if you create different rooms, if you think, hey, UTC, why'd you put that there? That should have gone downstairs. Go ahead and do it. Send me, uh, let me know in the comments. How would you redesign it? How do you make this space a little more useful for you? But it's a big, open, beautiful space, and I like it. And over to the kitchen side, my friends. Again, I have a window I haven't actually closed off. I like all the light coming through there, but if you want to put a glass window in, so be it. We've got the grill, and we need one fridge. The question is, how good am I at eyeballing these things? Not quite, but will the game let us do what it often lets us do, which is place things in a different order and get the combination we want? There is our fridge and our railing. Oh, heck yes. Oh yes, very nice and simple. We need task lighting, of course, here. This is where you would have your electric lighting around the crafting, around the cooking, because that's where you're working. Let's get one of these in. I think full brightness is totally acceptable for this area. That's gonna work for us. Oh boy, oh, this happened fast. Oh, that looks good, Huntsman. You just need to share a little bit of information with me and look what we have done. We have a great feeling place for you now. I'm really truly pleased, my friends. let us uh, I did double doors on the front, if you didn't notice. I added in wimpy pillars again and more staircases with some railings. I built a lean-to off to the right and never showed you that. But I think this entrance is a little better in its current form and it suits it. I like the double doors. Big deck. Very nice. And I have a space right here I never figured out what to do with. Breeding? You guys tell me, what would you use it for? But don't miss the trophy case. I see it. Broodmother Megapithecus. The other side is a couple of dragons. I see a big rex head. Huntsman, you must be so pleased. You are a veteran survivor and now you have a place to display the achievements, your greatest victories, and at the end of the day you get what you wanted to retire to a cool, calm study living on the frozen edge of the world. How far we have come, guys. Snowy River Cabin 2.0 from the original. What is this? 2015? It's cute, but it's so small. And we've set a new precedent. Now we can take any old build and make it new again. Everything old is new again. Everything under the sun. Tell me now, guys. Popping up on your screen is a list of my old tutorials. You each have your own favorite. Which one needs to be redone next? Which one needs an Ascended 2.0 version? Please tell me in the comments below. I am so happy to be back in your life and rebuilding these old beauties. Thank you for watching. I am Unite the Clans, and I will see you in the next one.